four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. What are councils up to? They're blowing all your cash on commercial property and they're getting it wrong big time. That's what we're going to deep dive into in this episode of Property Breaking News. Don't forget to like this video, also subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as we release a new video, which is two or three times a week and it's all designed to keep you on top of your property investing game. And I'm here with our special guest as usual, Andrew Roberts. We've just gone back in the DeLorean, it seems. Uh, we have to, indeed. You asked ask for a your younger, younger model. Self. <laughs> yeah, you asked for a younger model, a bit more up and upbeat. So here I am. And so thank you for inviting me again. Oh, as always, as always. Well, PBN wouldn't be the same without Andrew. So, what is this story about? I mean, councils, I mean, their brief is to empty out the goddamn bins, isn't it? I mean, what are they well, doing investing anymore. in commercial property? <laughs> not anymore, it's not. Their brief now is to become the largest commercial portfolio landlords in the UK. I mean, the, we had a rant about Croydon Council a little oh. while ago. Dare we go on about how a council could get it so wrong? Well, can I have a rant about Slough Council? Slough Council, if you're listening, you've messed up big time. They're in special measures. They are in special measures. Government have been brought in to run the council. Now, why are the government running the council? They splurged £1.2 billion on commercial property. That is more than their annual budget on commercial property. They borrowed £760 million. That's three quarters of a billion pound now, they there's, borrowed. There's nothing wrong with commercial property. Commercial property is a very, very sound investment. Commercial property buy to let makes a huge amount of sense. But these guys are just buying the wrong stuff, quite frankly. They're buying stuff that can't be repurposed. The people making the decisions aren't business people. No. They're <laughs> overpaying. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go there. Well, let me give you an example of what Slough Council has done. OK, you could understand them buying commercial buildings in their area. But they went to Basingstoke and bought an Odeon cinema. How far is that away from Slough? <laughs> Well, you think that's far away? They went to Portsmouth yeah. and bought Waitrose. They then spent £42 million. Now, this is my rant. They spent £42 million refurbishing a hotel. OK, it's in their area. But they made it a Thunderbirds-themed hotel. Oh, I can just see them taking off now. Now, uh, now of course, Slough Council need international rescue here. Certainly do. Certainly do. The more important thing, that's a very bad joke. <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> the thing we have to bear in mind here, though, is that if you don't pay, if you're a resident of Slough and you don't pay your council tax, you potentially go to jail. Yeah. Where is the remit of a council to actually undertake a business activity? I mean, if they want to set up a separate company, float on the stock exchange, you want to buy shares in it. Uh, on, of your own choice, and you want to back those absolute numpties to make business decisions, then do it out of freedom of choice by investing in shares in Slaubauer Council, commercial property, PLC or whatever. But you go to jail if you don't pay your council tax. Well, I totally agree with you. Now, this is the interesting thing about Slough Council and what they've done. They've spent £1.2 billion on commercial property. They've made some bad decisions during the last 12 months, of that 1.2 billion, they've written off 100 million. Wow. 100 million, that's almost 10% of their portfolio. They've written off. But because they're not of alone, bad are they? Decisions. They're, they're not alone. They're certainly not alone. If we looked on a national basis, in the last five years, 6.8 billion has been spent on commercial portfolios by councils. What's interesting is the advisors to the councils haven't actually done too bad. Now, we will know the names of these advisors, JLL, Savills, CBRE and others. Over the last five years, they've earned nearly half a billion pound in fees advising them of what to buy. Yes. I'd be asking for my money back at this point. 
Well, it, 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 it's a bit of a gravy train there, isn't it, on fees. And of course, they're the prob people probably selling these things. And a lot of, um, to be fair, when you actually look at some of the properties that have been bought, yeah. they are these out-of-town shopping centres, which is exactly the area of commercial property which is in crisis right now. Absolutely is. I mean, it, it's been hit incredibly hard. And if we looked at councils across the UK, what has happened is their portfolios have been slam dunked by the impacts of COVID because most of the things they've invested in have been impacted most by COVID. And that means they've suffered with a lack of rent. They've suffered with stores going bankrupt. Therefore, their bad debts have risen. Now, the worst council that I've seen some stats on is Speltthorn Council. Never heard of it. Where the hell is that? It's up north somewhere, oh, I believe. That's why I haven't heard of it. <laughs> but oh. they, they raised £72 million in taxpayers' money through business rates and council tax. They have a commercial property portfolio of £996 million. That's almost a billion pounds. That's more than 10 times the money they bring in from council taxpayers. Now, we have to ask a couple of questions here. Number one, firstly, how can they amass so much commercial property? Because you and I are commercial property investors and we have to pass acid tests to borrow the money. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, don't they have to achieve a certain return? Because we have to achieve a return on the money that we borrow. But also, shouldn't they be investing in commercial assets in their area? But that's the other thing, uh, which is that the borrowing, they, they, when they borrow money, they don't borrow at the same rates we do. Correct. They borrow as, the, as being a public sector organisation at far lower interest rates, government low interest rates. And that is actually structurally unfair. Um, it's not a level playing field. Well, do you know how much it is that they borrow at and go for on, what term? Me. Go on, go on, go on. It's a fixed rate of 2% for 30 years. Wow. Well, I'll have a bit of that and make a lot better returns than these guys are doing. I mean, the comments, this was reported in the Times, and the comments are just universally against it, you know. Councils are there to provide services to their citizens. They're not there to act as um, property developers. And it just goes on and on. Local authorities are not, um, are not uh, there to run businesses. They're not business people, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it just goes on and on and on. Quite right. Nor should they receive such high salaries for completely failing. <laughs> I mean, you know, it just goes on, really. I mean, it is beggar's belief. I mean, what, what's interesting, and we have to look at the motivation, why have councils done this? Well, councils claim that they've been spending this money on commercial property portfolios to fill the gap in their budgets. But surely to be filling a gap in your budget, the portfolio needs to be making money. And the problem that they've gone for is they've bought incredibly low yielding assets. Because they're buying at 2%, if it's yielding 3%, that's a positive return for them on their council tax money. But they never anticipated COVID, they never anticipated bad debts, they never anticipated tenants going bust and voids, and therefore their model's flawed. I kind of agree with you, but I think, I think what they've done is they've looked over at the private sector and they've seen people make some good profits. Yeah. in commercial property. And that's because in the private sector, the people that are making those good profits absolutely know what they're doing. That's the key thing, they have the knowledge. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Um, the other thing is, um, what has held people good during COVID is having commercial properties that can be repurposed. Correct. The problem, and the ones that you and I have done, They've all been properties that can be repurposed, so therefore 
Um, if the tenants don't pay the rent, ultimately you're in a better position mm. if, the, if it became empty because you can repurpose the things. When these folks have bought um, these out-of-town shopping centres in very deprived areas where there's no alternative use, it's not easy to repurpose and there's no other tenant willing to occupy, the rents go down and the value of the asset goes down because obviously yeah. the value of the asset is linked to the cash flow it generates. It, it absolutely is. And if I use an example, you and I, with the Mastermind Group, purchased a commercial property in Leicester. Our next door neighbour is Betfred, but the owner of that property is Staffordshire County Council. Oh, really? I didn't know that. But it's in Leicester. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Work that one out. Are they taking a real punt on that one? No pun intended. But you make the point, they don't understand the business model. Well, Grant Thornton have actually done an audit on councils. And the key comments from Grant Thornton's audit was, councils should not be investing in retail sector because they don't understand it. They don't understand how the market works, the strategy of investing, and it's a flawed business strategy for councils to pursue. Absolutely. Now, on that, I, I, I'm not sure what else I could add, but I think Grant Thornton summed it up beautifully. Has your council dabbled in commercial property? Let us know what you think in the comments below. I think um, what people can take from this is that there's a lot of bad press around commercial property, but that's usually because uh, they're reporting bad business decision makers yeah. in the commercial property space. Uh, what they're not reporting is the kind of stuff that uh, we're doing, our students are doing, uh, where they're doing it right. Correct. Yeah, and that is completely under the radar right now. And that is um, open to people who, are, who clue themselves up because it's not just repurposing commercial property um, through permitted development rights, but commercial property makes sense for, for a buy-to-let yeah. and for a pension investment. you just got to do it right. It's understanding the mechanics of the market and where and how to make money from it because it doesn't necessarily have to be repurposing it. It can just be a paperwork exercise, yes. restructuring a lease or removing some problems with paperwork and you uplift the value significantly. It's understanding this, and this is where uh, bureaucrats in councils, and I guess Slough must fall into that, given it was taken into special measures by the government, and government advisors appointed to run the council. You need to stop dabbling where you're not expert. You use the word bureaucrats, and I think that's a good word, because I think I mean, I've bought properties off council before, as I'm sure you have <laughs> yes. as well. Uh, um, and the, the thing is, because they are a council, they have to go through quite a convoluted process in order to sell it to you. The yeah. amount of people that have to sign off on it before that property can be disposed of yeah. is huge. Um, it's like half the council are signing up. You know, the, they have to get a signature from the janitor, for God's sake. You know, <laughs> um, so imagine... How can you be an agile? How can you have agility yeah. to move on a commercial property transaction when you've got to convince so many uh, people before you yeah. can even break wind? Well, we've had that similar situation. I used to work for the bank uh, that we just bought mm. um, in Leicester, and we used to nickname it the Big Blue Oil Tanker because. It was such a big organisation, getting it to change direction or getting people to sign off on stuff took forever. So yes. like an oil tanker, you can't do a quick 180 like a speedboat or a jet boat. It takes a long time to Absolutely. get things done and change direction. But I think looking at commercial property and councils, it's not a direction they should really be pursuing in my personal opinion. Agreed. Stick to emptying out the bins if you're listening, local authorities, or... If you do want to dabble in commercial property, uh, book on our commercial property course. <laughs> You'll learn how to do it right. I mean, leave the links in the description below. How about that for a cheeky little upsell? Uh, I was going to say, we look forward to welcoming you to the, to the Mastermind course, Slough Council. <laughs> so that's it for this video. Join us in our next property breaking news update. Uh, you've, been, you've been listening to Andrew Roberts and myself, Ranjan Bhattacharya. See you guys in the next video.
And if you're thinking of coming on the course, Slough Council, we actually hold it in your borough area as well. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to travel far. <laughs>